Praise the Lord. Happy, joyful, blessed people. Praise the Lord. I welcome you to the second day of this triumphant power crusade, the GCK. And I pray that your presence today will be blessed of the Lord. Amen. Heaven's face will shine upon you. Amen. And the power of the Lord will be manifested in such a way that your problems will receive a divine solution tonight in Jesus' name. What are you? Let heaven identify you there. Father, we thank you for this hour, for this moment. We thank you, Lord, because you are the God of all power, transforming power, triumphant power, translating power. And I pray that tonight, everyone will be connected with that power from heaven. That lives will turn around. Yeah. Families reunited. Yeah. And incurable diseases taken away from every life. Yeah. And then uh, the salvation of the soul, of the heart, of the man, of the woman, yeah. of the boy, yeah. of the girl. Yeah. Salvation for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. Take everyone higher than where they are now. Yeah. Confirm your power in every life. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. God bless you. You can be seated. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 45. And I'm reading from verse 21. Isaiah Chapter 45, verse 21. Tell ye, and bring them near. Yea, yes, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me a just God and a savior there is none beside me look at verse 22 in verse 22 look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth for I am God and there is none else here God himself speaks to everyone he speaks to you there today and those of us online understand that lord is speaking to you tonight and he says i am god and there is none else with any other power with a comparable power he says there is none else with creative power with redemptive power with saving power with healing power, it says there is none else. And he comes to you tonight to bless you. Yeah. And you are blessed. Yeah. Look at that, verse 21. It says in verse 21, tell ye and bring them near. It says, we should tell you. He sends his prophet. He sends the proclaimer. He sends the herald and he says, bring them near and tell them. They want salvation, tell them that he is God and is going to save. They want healing, tell them that he is God and is going to heal. Tell them they want deliverance, tell them he is God and is going to deliver. And then he says, bring them near. That's what we are doing tonight. You'll come nearer unto God. I said you'll come nearer unto God. Whatever your challenge, 
whatever your difficulty and whatever you are going through solution has come tonight he'll wipe the tears of your face wipe everything away he will totally take your life it will transform your life tonight in jesus name he said ye yeah, let them take counsel together who has declared this from ancient time he tells us from ancient time he has declared and because he has declared from ancient time he says the god that changes not the god who was great good gracious glorious in the past is still the same god today he will do good in your life it will transform that life. It will change that life. And then it says, from that ancient time, who has told it from that time, have not I, the Lord, I told the children of Israel, I came to save them. Did it not happen? I took them through the wilderness. Did it not happen? I provided for all their needs. Did it not happen? I sent my son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and everything, everyone that came to him, they were saved. They were healed. They were delivered. And what God had said will happen, it said, tell them it had been of old time. Have not I the Lord done what I said? I will do then. He said, there is no God else beside me. There is no other God. There's no other power. There's no other creator. He is God forever God and is today your God he will solve your problem it says it just God it just God who is that somebody who promises and he does it somebody who told you to come near and you keep near and he blesses you somebody who brings the joy and the happiness and the blessing of heaven upon you a just god who is not impartial who is not partial a god who will bless this and bless this and bless that and bless everyone that god is there tonight and he will do great unforgettable things in your life in jesus name he said a savior that god saves this god he will save you tonight i said he will save you tonight he said there is none else beside me then look at verse 22 again he said look unto me that is don't look to idols don't look to your own self-effort or self-righteousness it says look unto me and be ye saved that word saved there means the solution to every problem that you have look unto me and be ye saved look unto me and be ye healed look unto me and be ye delivered look unto me and then come out of that problem and let a new life eternal life come unto you look unto me tonight as you look unto the lord it will save you it will heal you it will deliver you that yoke that bondage it will set you free in jesus name look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth everyone all the ends of the earth here in israel egypt lebanon arab world america south america canada europe spain everywhere look unto him tonight all the ends of the earth because it says i am god there is none else that's the message i bring to you tonight and the topic is the transforming power of christ our savior the transforming power of christ our savior now there are three things we're looking at number one the transgressions number two the transformation number three 
the translation. Number one, the transgressions of weak, wounded sufferers. Many people are suffering in the world. They're weak and there's no strength and they cannot help themselves. Why? Our transgressions make us weak. Our iniquities make us weak. Our evil make us weak. That means the evil we have done. The evil we have planted. And the evil we had perpetrated, they actually wounded us more than wounding any other person. And because of that, we suffer. We're talking about what has produced the problem, the pain, the sickness, the suffering that we all have as human beings today is a transgression that caused that. But number two, God is able. He will forgive you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It will transform your life. Amen. Yeah. It will change your life. Amen. Yeah. It will turn every bad thing, every negative thing around in your life. Because, number two, there is transformation for waking, willing seekers. As you come and you're seeking the Lord, and you say, I, I can't do that for myself. I can't save myself. I can't heal myself. I can't deliver myself, but it's a God in heaven. And he says, I shall come near unto him. And as I come near, that God will save me and transform my life. Tonight is that night. Yeah. You're seeking the Lord, you have a willing heart, a submissive heart, and you say, Lord, my Savior, Lord, my healer, Lord, my deliverer, you are the one I seek. The transformation of waking and the seeking person, willing before the Lord. Transformation. Somebody shout, transformation. transformation. Let me hear your voice. Transformation. As you wake up and you say, why am I the way I am? Why did I go the direction I've been going? I want a change. I want salvation. And you're willing to do what he calls you to do. Tonight is that night of salvation. Tonight is that night of total deliverance. And tonight is the night of your miracle. Number three is the translation into whitened worthy souls. He makes you worthy. He actually translates you, removes you, transports you from where you are, and he translates you and transports you to the highest level of your desire. You yeah. will do it. Yeah. I said you will do it. Yeah. Number one, transgression. Number two, transformation. Number three, translation. Let's look at number one here. Number one, the transgressions of the weak, wounded, sufferers. There's something in Proverbs chapter 13, looking at verse 2. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. The word of God says, transgressors, sinners, which all people are, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That the sinners are the sufferers. The sinners are the people that bring suffering upon themselves. It says the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. Look at verse 15 there. Verse 15 says... 
good understanding giveth favor. As you hear the word of God, and you have good understanding, and then you yield and submit to the understanding of the word that you have, then favor will come from heaven for you. Forgiveness, that's favor, will come from heaven for you. Freedom will come from heaven for you. Good understanding giveth favor. Look at the other side of the coin. When you have a coin, that's head, that's tail. That's one side, that's the other side. Look at the other side of the coin. But the way of transgressors is hard. The way of transgressors is blood. The way of transgressors is rough. The way of transgressors is painful. The way of transgressors brings suffering. The way of transgressors is hard. As we look at our lives and we see the hardship we face, the suffering we have, the sicknesses we endure, and the contrary wind that blows against us. Why? Because of our transgression, because of our evil. And wherever we labor on the face of the earth, anywhere there is transgression, and it's everywhere. Anywhere there is sinfulness, and it's everywhere. Everywhere there is evil doing, and it's everywhere because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And anywhere those sinful traits are, anywhere those evil things appear, there is suffering. That's why. We need to clear up the transgression. We need to clear up the sinfulness. We need to clear up all the iniquity because that is what brings suffering into our lives. Look at Isaiah chapter 59. I'm reading from verse 1 there. Isaiah 59 verse 1. Behold the Lord's hand it's not shortened that he cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. God hears. God's hands will lift you up. Why has it not happened? What is delaying the salvation, the healing, the deliverance? What is delaying the setting free of the captive? Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. It's the iniquity. It's the evil. It's the evil thing that we have done. The sinful things we have done and the sinful life we have lived. That is what keeps away the salvation of the Lord, the healing of the Lord, the deliverance of the Lord, and the favor of the Lord away from us. But today, as you come and you say, Lord, I'm turning around. Lord, I'm changing my ways. Lord, I quit all those evil things and I want your forgiveness, your favor, your pardon, your salvation, salvation will come to you. Amen. Look at Psalm 51. I'm reading from verse 1. And see a man that knew that the suffering, the hardship, the heartache, and all the pressures destroying his life came as a result of his transgression. And he became weak. And he became wounded. And he started suffering. And his position in life could not prevent the suffering. Look at what he did. He said in Psalm 51 verse 1. 
have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, because I know as long as those transgressions are there, and you're looking at them, and you're reading them, and you number them against me, the suffering will continue. But I'm pleading that you blot out my transgressions. And the Lord tonight, that's what he will do for you. I said that's what he will do for you. But he owned up. He didn't say it's somebody else's transgression. My father's transgression, my parents' transgression, society's transgression. That's what brought me to this. I said, no, my transgressions, as you honor, as you accept, and you know this is the problem. The Lord will wipe away your transgression. And when the transgressions are gone, the suffering will go. The panic will go. The evil will go. And all the pressures, everything will go in Jesus' name. Look at verse 2 there. It says in verse 2, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. It says, once I bear the iniquity, I will carry the infirmity. And so, what I'm asking of you, Lord, is to wash me, is to cleanse me, is to purge me. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Tonight is that night. The Lord will do it. Look at verse, five, verse uh, 7. In verse 7, here he tells us, purge me with Aesop, and I shall be clean. It will cleanse you up tonight. It will transform your life tonight. Purge me. Cleanse me. Wash me, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. Tonight is your night. Look at Hebrews chapter 9, reading from verse 15. And for this cause, he, Christ, he, our Savior, is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death, he died for us, died for you, died for me, died for everyone. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the false testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. As he calls you, and you respond, as he calls you, and you repent, as he calls you, and you say, yes, Lord, here I am. I turn away from all my sin. I turn away from all my transgression, and I come wholeheartedly with all my heart all my soul all my mind i come unto you and i'm asking that you forgive me he'll forgive you amen, amen. Yeah. as i'm asking that you cleanse me it will cleanse you yeah. as you are asking that it will turn your life around it will do it in jesus name yeah. Look at verse 27. It says in verse 27, As it is appointed unto men, once to die. Now we know death is common. And before the rapture, before the Lord comes in the air to catch and to take the children of God and the saints of God away, it's appointed unto men, once to die. But after this, the judgment, that means all the transgression, all the iniquities, all the evil, all the sinfulness that caused the suffering here on earth. If somebody does not repent and he continues in that sinfulness, 
in that transgression and in that evil, in that iniquity, until the end of time that he comes to die. And he dies in sin without forgiveness. He dies in sin without salvation. It is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. And then the suffering will continue until all eternity. That's why you are coming to the Lord today. I say that's why you are coming to the Lord today. And as you come, he'll forgive you. As you come, he'll take all the transgressions away. He will transform your life. Amen. Any amen over there? Amen. He'll transform your life. He'll take you. He'll forgive you. And when he forgives you, he sets you free. And all things will become different and change in your life in Jesus' name. Watch do we see in your life? What do we notice in your life? When that salvation has come, that leads me to point number two, is the transformation of awakened and willing seekers. The transformation, the forgiveness that comes, the change of life that comes, the new life eternal life that comes to you. Look at that, Isaiah chapter 1, reading from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now. It says, hurry up. It says, don't waste any time. It says, this is the time. The time of your salvation, the time of your renewal, the time of your forgiveness come now and let us reason together, says the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, dirty, evil, dangerous, red, danger, red, it's what, you know, people use when uh, there is a possibility of open electric wire somewhere. And the pace not there, and they say danger with rage. What the Lord is saying uh, is that your sins, your iniquities, don't they be red like crimson. He'll make them uh, as white as snow. Amen. I lost an amen. amen. Tonight is that night amen. when the Lord will take all your transgression, when the Lord will take all your iniquity, when the Lord will take everything that has been wrong in your life and you confess and you forsake and you say, Lord, here am I, cleanse me, wash me, forgive me. The Lord will forgive you. It says, but there must be something, look at verse 19. Verse 19 says, if ye be willing. Are you willing to have eternal life? Are you willing to have forgiveness? Are you willing to have all your sins blotted out? If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Over here on earth, the Lord will take care of you. Yeah. And then with that salvation, with that transformation, with that change of life, when you die, you go to be in the presence of the Lord and you'll eat the good of that eternal everlasting land in Jesus' name. Yeah. Sin brings suffering here and eternity. But repentance, salvation, new life, forgiveness brings goodness here on earth and also in eternity. Amen. Amen. Let me show you some people that have done that. Acts chapter 19 and see how they turned away 
from their iniquity. See how they turn the way from their sin. How the goodness of God is salvation, in freedom, in forgiveness. How the goodness of God in eternal life came unto them. Acts chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 18. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. They had magical instruments. They had occultic materials. And when they knew that iniquity, and they knew transgression, and they knew their evil will bring suffering upon them, they came and they believed in the Lord. And as they believed in the Lord, they confessed and everything was taken away. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, many of them also, which use curious acts, occultic acts, because they belong to different gangs and societies doing evil, they brought their books together and they burnt them before all men and they counted the price of them and found the age 50 thousand pieces of silver their repentance was genuine their repentance actually brought them forgiveness from the lord as you repent tonight forgiveness will come salvation will come eternal life will come in first corinthians chapter 6 Reading from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 6. Reading from verse 9. I've been talking about transgression, bringing suffering. Sin, bringing suffering. Iniquity, bringing suffering. What is transgression? What is sin? And what is that evil thing that brings all that into men's lives, women's lives. First Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Unrighteousness, what's that? That's the opposite of righteousness. Evil, what's that? That's the opposite of good. Iniquity, what's that? That's the opposite of innocence. If your lie shows, depicts, demonstrates the opposite of righteousness, the opposite of innocence, the opposite of honesty. If your life depicts the opposite of righteousness and holiness, that is the transgression and the transgression brings sin and it brings suffering and it is repentance that brings forgiveness redemption salvation eternal life know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived neither fornicators no idolaters, no adulterers, nor the effeminate, no abusers of themselves with mankind. Verse 10, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. What do we do so that that salvation will come? What must be we, we be willing to do so that new life, eternal life will come? And look at verse 11. It says, and such were some of you, but ye are washed. He'll wash you tonight. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. God, as you come out of the transgression, and you come out of the iniquity, and you come out of the evil doing, the Lord will take you tonight. 
It will save you tonight. It will change your life tonight. It will transform your life tonight. In Revelation chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. That is, you've been uh, having Babylonish character. Babylonish behavior. Babylonish iniquity. Babylon, the picture of defilement and evil. And now you don't want the suffering here on earth. You don't want the suffering there in hell forever. There is one thing to do. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. As you come, forgiveness is ready and forgiveness is waiting for you. Eternal life is waiting for you. The favor of God is waiting for you. And the grace of God for salvation, the grace of God for righteousness is waiting for you. It is yours tonight. What is she there? What is she there? It's coming your way. Salvation. Healing. Deliverance. Coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. Number three now. Number one, transgressions. Number two, transformation. A change of life. Number three is the translation. The translation into whitened and worthy souls. It'll make you worthy tonight. I said it'll make you worthy tonight. We're looking at Colossians chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 13. Who? has delivered us from the power of darkness. Amen. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He takes you away from the kingdom of sin, from the kingdom of Satan, from the kingdom of darkness, from the kingdom of evil. As you stretch your hand to him, as you turn away from every form of sin, every form of transgression, every form of evil, and you say, here am I, Lord, save me, and I shall be saved. At that moment, which is tonight in your life, I say tonight in your life, it will take you out of that kingdom of darkness, out of that kingdom of sinfulness, out of that kingdom of evil, out of the kingdom of the sufferers who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's what forgiveness does in our lives. That's what favor from heaven does in our lives, that's what the power of the Savior, the power of the Redeemer, that is what it does in our lives. He delivers us from the power of darkness and he translates us into the kingdom of his dear son. Look at verse 14 there. In verse 14, in whom we have redemption tonight. As you come to the Lord, condemnation will vanish away. Yeah. And the guilt will be taken away. Yeah. And the oppression and the suffering will be taken away. In whom we have at this present moment now, the moment you repent and believe, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sins. What are you going to have tonight? Let me hear you. As you come 
and you tell him to wash you, uh, you'll be whiter than snow. He'll make you worthy, and then eternal life will come. You'll have forgiveness of sin in Jesus' name. And then he tells us in Mark chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 5. Mark chapter 2, verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, their faith was expressed in their willingness to come to him. Their faith was expressed in their coming to him against all odds, against all thoughts, against every form of discouragement, against anything that could have prevented them he saw their faith. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. That's the beginning of the blessing of God in our lives tonight. It will speak to your heart. It will say, Son, daughter, your sins be forgiven thee. And when that forgiveness comes, when that grace of salvation comes, then all the other blessings of healing, of deliverance, of answered prayer, everything will come to your life. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise, and take up thy bed and walk. Then in verse 10, in verse 10, but that she may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, it says to the sick of the palsy. In verse 11, it says, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house first of all forgiveness first of all eternal life first of all salvation because that is what opens the door of heaven for us to go to heaven after that healing arise take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house Look at verse 12, in verse 12, and immediately he arose. When are you going to arise? When are you going to get healed? When is God going to change all the suffering, all the sicknesses, all the plagues of your life? Immediately now, and immediately he arose. And he took off his bed, and he went forth before them all in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God saying we never saw it on this fashion in this fashion it will happen to you yeah. are looking at Psalm 51 I read now from verse 7 Psalm 51 verse 7 purge me that's the prayer cleanse me that's the prayer. Blot out my transgression. That's the prayer. Put me with Esau. And I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. The joy of salvation is coming to your heart tonight. The joy of salvation will fill your heart and your soul tonight in Jesus' name. Uphold me with thy free spirit when salvation comes, new life comes, righteousness comes, forgiveness comes. Then it's not only salvation for the night, salvation for the day, it's salvation that continues for the rest of your life. As the Lord Himself who has saved you upholds you with His free spirit. Revelation chapter 3, 
I'm reading from verse 4. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 4, thou hast a few names, even in studies, which have not defiled their garments tonight. It will give you the garment of righteousness. And that garment you will keep and you're not allowed the world and sinners in the world, sinners inside to soil that garment, that garment or remain clean and white. It says they have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy. The salvation you have today makes you worthy and then you continue in that salvation of the Lord, walking with the Lord every moment of your life and keeps you worthy. And when you come to pray, you are worthy of an answer. When you ask the Lord for the solution to your problem, you are worthy of the solution to your problem. And when you demand anything, you are worthy of his provision because he forgives you, because he saves you, because he shows the favor of life eternal on you and you are walking with the Lord and he makes you worthy of his fellowship. And then when the time comes to go up and go and see the eternal God, you'll be worthy of seeing him in heaven and living with him in heaven because his forgiveness that you get today, his salvation that you get today, and his deliverance that you get today, his cleansing, his washing, and his purifying your life that you get today makes you worthy until that day when you see him face to face. You will see him. I will see him. I will see him. I will see him because he forgives you, because he sets you free, because he gives you his salvation and you hold on to that salvation and he has translated you out of the kingdom of darkness and you don't remain in darkness and sinfulness anymore and your healing, he'll give you your healing. He give you the miracle. He give you the deliverance. Tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Amen. You will forsake all iniquity, all transgression, all evil, and everything of unrighteousness. Say, Lord, I drop them. Lord, I keep them away from my life. I confess, I forsake, and I'm asking Christ who died for me on the cross of Calvary to change every situation in my life and give me the power to go and sin no more. Not to continue those evil, dirty, defiling things I've done in the past. That grace will come to you now. And then, uh, if you have any sickness, any infirmity, the Lord will touch you and heal you and take all that away in Jesus' name. Ready? Willing? And you'll do what the Lord wants you to do. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The forgiveness of the Lord is available. The favor of the Lord is available. The grace of the Lord is available. You'll do it right there today. You want this forgiveness so that freedom, favor, salvation will come to you. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand to say, Lord, I am willing. Lord, I am ready. I want your forgiveness in my life. I want your salvation in my life. Where are you? Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. Be ready. Be willing. And then tell the Lord, I will not continue in my sins anymore. 
I will not continue in my iniquity anymore. I will not continue in my transgression anymore. Raise up that hand. Stand up as you are raising up the hand. Stand up. That's right. That's right. God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you there. Stand up right there and show your willingness and your readiness to receive the salvation of the Lord. The translation that he takes you away out of the kingdom of weakness and darkness and sinfulness and he brings you to the kingdom of his dear son. Rise up. Tell the Lord as we're rising up that Lord, I want that favor, that forgiveness. I want that pardon. I want that eternal life. The salvation that will make me ready for heaven. Take me away from the path of hell and bring me to the very path of your salvation tell the lord right there as you're standing up the lord is faithful and the lord is ready he'll forgive you now keep up your hand as you are standing up and praying with you now father in the mighty name of jesus and lord and savior i come on behalf of every sinner every transgressor that has repented and they are calling upon you that they want your salvation, your forgiveness now. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Blot out all their transgressions. Change their lives and grant them favor and grace for righteous living in Jesus' name. Confirm in their heart the joy of salvation. Grant unto them the peace of salvation. Grant unto everyone the victory in salvation that they will not continue in the old way anymore in Jesus' name. Let your spirit be a witness of their heart of the spirit that right now they are saved they are forgiven and they have reconciliation with god redemption from god thank you lord because we know it is done in jesus name we pray amen god bless you keep on standing our counselors will attend to you there and then after that I'll come back and pray for those who have a need of healing, deliverance, miracle. It's coming your way. I call on a moderating an overseer to help us this time of counseling. Remain standing. Our counselors, please, as we have been divided in the morning, let's move into the congregation now and stand by those people take them one by one take all the information no preaching just take the information our choristers let's move into the congregation don't stay by the wayside Cover the clusters you have been appointed to. Keep standing up and raising up your hands so that you can be identified. Don't allow them to pass you by. Make sure you are captured. As one of those people whose name have been written in heaven today. Congratulations. Angels are rejoicing because of you. Let's move very fast. You 
the supervisors ensure that uh, uh, everywhere is covered, not just in front below, the far back, back on the right side, back on the left side, back in the center. Let's make sure that every cluster is covered. And let's do it neatly, write in capital letters, write legibly. The phone numbers, scan them, it should be 11 digits. Once you finish one person, move to the next person. This, if you have not been uh, attended to, don't sit down. Remain standing there. You can call the attention of the counselors. They will move to you. Moving to the back, moving to the center, come into the middle. Don't stay at the edges alone. Don't sit down until you are tended to. Other participant, you can be, you know, praying and meditating on what you have heard. while you wait for the miracle prayer. But those who have given their life to Christ, remain standing until you are attended to. God bless you. If they are not attended to you, raise up your hand and wave it like this. Let me see. Wave it, wave it, wave it. Can Counselors, please note those people and our friends online, social media. You have given your life to Christ. Check the form, and fill it online and ensure you submit. Online converts, that will give me a light to Jesus Christ, You have connected with the Lord Jesus Christ. Fill that form now. And make sure you submit after filling. Please, if... Our television audience, check your screen. You will see the WhatsApp number there. You can text your information and send to those uh, WhatsApp numbers. Counselors, if you have finished, the supervisors, you can 
wave your flag so that we know you are finished. Yes. Those on my left hand side, if you are finished, I can see your flag. Raise it up and wave to us so that we know you are finished. On the right hand side, wave your flag if you are finished so that we know you are finished. Please ensure no one is omitted. Our online converts, don't forget, fill that decision form there. And to show that you have connected with Christ and submit. In the same way, radio, television, converts, those who are deciding to connect with Christ, to surrender their life to Christ. After that prayer you have prayed now, feel the information and send to the WhatsApp number on the screen. If you are finished, please indicate everybody we should be getting ready for the triumphant power to come into our life now. On the right hand side at the back, have we finished? The center, have we finished at the back? On my left hand side at the back, have you finished? God bless you. Get ready now. Get ready now. The time of your miracle is here. I said the time of your miracle is here. As our Father and the Lord comes to pray for us. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. The Lord, by triumphant power, will transfer miracle into your life. Yeah. Healing in your body. Yeah. Deliverance for you tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. The one that has power to forgive also has power to heal. The one that has power to save also has the power to deliver. And he invites you tonight and he says, look unto me. All the ends of the earth are be saved, are be healed, are be delivered because I am God and there is none else beside me. Tonight is coming to you at your point of need, right there. Yeah. You'll turn everything around in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Identify the problem you have and lay your hand there and raise up the other hand. And then we pray the God to the God who hears prayer, who answers prayer. We pray to the one 
who is everywhere present present there with you present there with you present there with you and with you over there and whatever the challenge whatever the ailment whatever the disease the lord tonight by his power in his grace by his miracle walking divine power in your life tonight is your night of healing raise up that hand raise up that hand raise up that hand lay the other hand where you have the problem you are the candidate for the miracle tonight for the transforming power of the lord tonight and that infirmity and that sickness and that disease and that thing that had been there that will not let you live a healthy happy free life tonight the lord will deal with that thing are you ready? Yes. Willing? Yes. Believing? Yes. Father, in Jesus' name. Yes. I thank you tonight because you are mighty God and because you are God that cannot fail. You have given your word and the word is going to come true. I pray, Lord, manifest your healing power in the lives of the people tonight in Jesus' name. The God who is the same yesterday and today and forever. The God who says, I am God, I change not. Manifest that transforming power, triumphant power in the life of every sick person here today in Jesus' name. Jesus, the same yesterday and today and forever. And you went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. You are going to do today what you have ever done in the past and therefore lord i pray your healing virtue will flow through everyone right now healing touch come to everyone right now and healing testimony in every mouth now in jesus name just blind eyes i command you be opened in jesus name Insanity, madness, I command that spirit, come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are deaf and dumb. I pray, Lord, by your mighty power, take that deafness away and take that dumbness away in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any swelling in their body. All that swelling, the Lord touch you right now in the neck, in the tummy, in the private part, anywhere, lipantiasis. I command the swelling, come out in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for those who have any incredible disease like cancer, like blood just flowing and flowing. I'm asking, Lord, to touch them right now, transform their lives right now, heal them right now, set them free from that cancer in Jesus' name. The kidney problem there, I command kidney come alive and be healed in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for those who have any demonic oppression in their body, knocking their head or walking about in their body or just causing incurable problem there, I command that evil spirit walking about in their body, come out in Jesus' name. For those who have any paralysis with that hand or with that leg or stroke or anything like that, and even the broken bones, heal them right now. Lord, heal them right now. Lord, make them to rise and walk in Jesus' name. Impossibilities become possible in your life. And the grace of God and the glory of God and the power of the Lord operate in your life right now. Receive your healing. 
Receive your deliverance. Receive your miracle. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It is done. It is done. Check up yourself. You'll find that the miracle is there already. And whatever you couldn't do before this, by time, because the miracle is there, the healing is there, you do it now. Open your blind eyes and you will see. On those lame, those blacks that were lame before rise up, now you can walk. And all those things that appeared in your body before, and now everything is taken away, check up, your miracle is there.